top quarterbacks are causing major headaches for fantasy owners, more injury problems for Jamal Charles and Arian Foster, who both missed Sunday's games. That led the way for an interesting cast of characters to top the fantasy scoreboards in week three. And last, who should you be looking to fill the holes on your roster after week three? We've got our waiver wire rankings and plenty more here on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwood, and I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Dustin, or Project KSL. Week three is in the books, and man, it seems like we say it every single week, but it seemed to me like this was one of the craziest weekends for fantasy football that I can ever remember. Yeah. I mean, Dustin, I'm going to name off 11 guys right now who all went pretty much undrafted in most leagues, (laughs) and yet they finished as top 24 scorers at running back this week. So that means that they were all worth starting as at least RB2s this past weekend. So we've got Niall Davis, Alfred Blue. Kyle Jesenick, oh. Isaiah Crowell, Roy Hallou, Joe, Joe McKnight, LeGarrette Blunt, oh. Anton Smith, Terrence West, Lorenzo Talaferro, and Donald Brown. God. There's that so is many an... shitters on that list. <laughs> there are just so, so many. many... On that list. This is like the ultimate weekend for fantasy football. Like, uh, Dog just shit. stealing touchdowns <laughs> and just like. It's just awful. So Joe McKnight is on that list. Yeah, Joe, Joe McKnight with his two touchdowns, dude. Big big time <laughs> sleeper. Big time sleeper. Joe, Joe MC, as, as we're calling him. Um, so, Dustin, oh do you think that it's time that when we see something like this with all these guys, do you think it's time that we almost start to abandon the traditional school of thought that says that when we're doing our fantasy drafts at the beginning of the year, we have to right. get two running backs and and that's really the formula to win you a championship? I mean, have things changed? Yeah, I mean, I think they have to some extent because, I mean, it, it, it's been changing recently or, or more so recently in the with the running backs is just so many teams are going running back by committee. Yep. There's yeah. so few, like... He's the lead dog. There's really no chance of goal line carries getting snaked. There's no chance of significant, like, substitution carries. Like, I mean, Adrian Peterson was one of those guys. Like, Sean McCoy last year was one of those guys. Right, Jamal right. Charles was one of those guys. But it seems like even I mean, Matt Forte, Jamal Charles, yeah. Yeah, there's so few of those guys out there. That I think there will always be a premium on a running back that you can start week in and week out. And he's the guy in that offense. And now, I mean, now yeah. with how the running backs have panned out this season, there's even less of those. So for the guys that are still like an Adrian who obviously isn't playing right now or right. a McCoy or, or a Forte, like you said, I, I still think those guys have a big premium. But, I mean, certainly there's something to be said for having a guy like, again, I mean, Peyton Manning, he's 20 points every week. You write it down no matter who he's playing, you get that consistency. I'm going to have the number one quarterback. Or a Jimmy Graham or a Calvin consistency, you know you're getting an advantage. Yeah, it's that big point differential that you get. Uh, when you do have the the amazing running back that breaks, you know that that really just like breaks does goal. what he's supposed to do, yeah. you know when you draft the guy in the top ten or the top twelve and in, in your first round pick, and uh, and he doesn't pan out or he gets injured, which running backs traditionally get injured a All lot more than every other position. Yeah. Um, you know we take that risk at running back because we want to see that our guy is the one that year that you know, does what Adrian Peterson's done throughout his career where he gets drafted as a top three running back and he performs as a top three running back. It's like, yep. you know, we get into that mold of, well, that's what all of them are going to be, right? Yeah. I draft this guy in the first round and he's going to and he's gonna pan out for me. I don't necessarily feel like it's that way anymore. I mean, um, even when you see guys like Jamal Charles, uh, who has struggled this year, even when he's been on the field, yeah. um, you know, he was the number one scoring running back last year in fantasy football. And this year, Guys like Niall Davis, uh, Joe McKnight yeah, in that hurt. same offense are, yeah. are producing. And I'm not going to say that either. Of, I'm not going to say Joe McKnight is even somebody that we should even consider. Nah, but, you don't even worry about him. Um, Niall Davis looked damn good. I mean, Jamal Charles hasn't had that, lot of, that many touches, though, is the thing. He right. had like five or six week one, which is just stupid as hell. And then week two has like two gets hurt. Niall Davis comes in, tears it up. Week three, Niall Davis tears it up. So. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously I think that that leads us toward really what my main question point is here with this question and that is um if you do go with let's say your first two round picks or you did you get a 
uh, Peyton Manning, and then the second round you take a Julius Thomas, for example. Right. So you're getting two players, and I hate to use two Broncos. Uh, that's just two guys that well, came to mind that were first really and weird. second rounds. But yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, two guys who are not run- running backs in your first two picks. Right. Traditionally, that is a major no-no. But the thing is, is that early every single year, there are quality running backs who get injured early in the year, and we're able to go out there and get guys like yeah. Terrence West, and we're able to get guys like Niall Davis, or you know, guys like Donald Brown, who are now in a situation where you know previously they were basically useless, but we use a high Andrew's waiver wire claim on them, and yeah. and suddenly they're a, a very viable player, a Matt Asiata for another example. Yeah. So you know, all these guys are. Players who, like I said, went undrafted, but they're starting right. for fantasy football teams early in the year just because of that. And I actually think running back is an interesting position because I don't think you can do that with wide receivers. So, like, for example, if Brandon Marshall was injured, we're not finding, you know, Alshon yeah. Jeffrey remains really productive, San obviously. Antonio Holmes gets a bump, but other than that, but there ain't yeah, a lot of activity. But yeah. it's not like he becomes a guy who suddenly is a Marshall. must start. Yeah, he's not Brandon Marshall, obviously. Right. Yeah. So, but, like, for example, in running back, you've got a Jamal Charles, and if he goes down— Niall Davis is a must start yeah. every week. No, and absolutely. I don't think that yeah. that's something that happens at wide receiver. So I think that it's I think that it's actually almost easier to replace running backs than it is any other position, maybe other than quarterback, it because is there's you, just it, enough quality it, quarterbacks. But. It, it is if you can play the waivers, right? I mean, it all comes right. down to that. And it also it all comes down to are, how confident are you able to hit on a guy like Rashad Jennings, who's torn it up and he's been very good for his late ADP. No right. middle Wolf round like ADPs, guy yeah. At. Yeah, like if, if you are very confident in your ability to like, yeah, I know that this guy is going to be a stud. Like, I mean, Toby Gerhardt was going around the same range as Rashad Jennings, and he's been complete ass. Well, Rashad Jennings has been great. Yep. Yep. And if yep. you make that claim on Toby Gerhardt, you're in terrible situations. If you make it with Rashad Jennings, you're in a pretty good spot. So it's all about how confident you are in your ability to get the later on running backs and get their production for your team. Exactly. You know, and we touched a little bit on the consistency with Peyton Manning, and I think that he's the kind of player, like I said, that you can draft in the first round and feel really confident about. And he actually did have another really nice week, even in a loss to Seattle this week. Yep, but 300 yards, two TDs. Yeah, but the thing is, is that so many of the other top quarterbacks have been really disappointing so far. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he threw for under 200 yards and only one touchdown for the second time this year. Drew Brees hasn't cracked 20 points yet in the standard scoring league. Cam Newton is only thrown for two touchdowns in two games, and he's only rushed for 26 yards. Right. Tom Brady has three touchdowns so far in three games. Matt Stafford, one touchdown in his past two games with three picks. I yeah. mean, all of these guys were drafted as fantasy starters for quarterbacks, maybe with the exception of Tom Brady, but it's still, I think Tom I mean, Brady was sneaking the in there. And everyone was saying he's a bounce back here anyways. Yeah, Brady was definitely right. drafted to be a starter in most leagues. So my question is, with all these quarterbacks, maybe other than Peyton Manning, I mean, these are basically right. all of the other top quarterbacks yeah. being drafted. I mean, we're really looking at all of them pretty much. So mm-hmm. um, are any of these situations concerning to you, or should we just be looking at – kind of pass them based on the small sample size you know what i mean i i feel like breeze is still having good games but he's not even good games for his adp but the thing right that I, if there's something to be concerned about breeze is everyone talked about how easy new orleans schedule was mm-hmm. it was man they have a cakewalk the whole way through and this year they played atlanta they played cleveland and they played minnesota and for him to not just explode and they're one and two <laughs> in any of those games yeah it's it's so damning it's like man what they're running the ball more but they just the defense just doesn't look like we thought it would look the right. offense doesn't look like it, that it would look. So I think there's a little bit of concern, but I'd still Drew Brees. I still have confidence he's going to finish top five. Stafford is always hot or cold, man. He always has those amazing games like he had week one. He always has those yeah. shitters. I think that's who he is. I mean, Brady it's... looks terrible is the thing. Brady was awful last year for fantasy. I don't want him this year. He just looks like he's completely washed up. Yeah, and I think we were both on board with the Brady not being a top 12 fantasy yeah, quarterback this he's, year. He's not um, top 15 for me right now. Yeah, and I mean, especially when you could have gotten guys like Jake Cutler. Who were yeah, going who's going later, later than, than him. him? Yeah, it's so absurd, man. Uh, Jay Cutler is later than him too. Yeah, and and those, both those guys look so much better right now. Oh yeah, incredibly um, better than Brady. I mean, Brady's and, and all that's even all name value, but you know what's crazy about it is that Philip Rivers and Jay Cutler have dealt with offenses that have their top targets injured. You know, yeah. or their top some of their top players are dealing with injuries, yeah. and yet they still are outperforming Tom Brady. I don't yep. think that 
I, you're right. I don't think Tom Brady is a top 15 quarterback going forward. No, I, I mean, only started. based on – the only reason that I think that you could really make the claim is that you know that he's going to be the New England Patriots quarterback. Like, there's no one taking his job, no, regardless yeah, of no, how shitty he does. for Garoppolo so, or anything, yeah. You know, I mean, I think that makes him, like, kind of up there. But, like, as far as his numbers go, I mean, if he throws 25 touchdowns this year, I think that that's a pretty good year. For him, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, for him, yeah. I mean, and the one thing also, too, is, I mean – this week, I know a lot. I mean, I had him in a league this week or this week for Brady. I'm thinking, okay, I have to put Tom Brady in. He's playing Oakland at home for God's right. sake. He right. has to have a good week. And he just right. drops a shitter on you again, and they look terrible. He's yeah. just, he's not. When you think Tom Brady, you think, oh, seven, toss him to Moss, toss him to Welker, Terrence. He's not that guy anymore. He's just not. He was bad last year. He's bad again this year. He has all his weapons back. He's just not who he is. You can, I mean, there's much better quarterbacks out there for him than yeah, him. Yeah, right they, they don't have a wide receiver that can stretch the field. Yeah, I mean Edelman's they amazing don't have for a slot receiver. Yeah, a Gronk still looks like he's. I mean Gronk's Gronk and they Gronk's have still doing what he's doing. Yeah, that weapon has that, that team has more weapons than a lot of other teams. I don't want to act like right. they're you know completely barren of any substantial skill players, but still like he's just not a good quarterback right now. Yeah, I mean. I, I will always say I think Tom Brady is probably he's probably my favorite quarterback of all time. So oh, I'm always gonna have that little time. I'm yeah. always gonna have that little soft spot in my heart. But from a fantasy standpoint, we have to be able to separate how yeah, much we watched. like a player and how much we like them for fantasy. <laughs> so, yeah, no, exactly, definitely. So I mean that's that's the big thing to me. So uh, yeah, I mean I completely agree with you. I think um, the other one that's a little bit concerning to me right now is Rogers. Cam Newton. Oh yeah. Man, well, and we knew about Newton because of the, the rib thing, man. He had the ribs. He had all the surgeries in the offseason. Right. I mean, we, me and you both thought that he would have less rushing this year because yeah. they can't risk him. But 26 yards in two games, I mean, dude? yeah, it's, like, it's even smaller than Thought. And the O-line is getting <sighs> killed, too, man. The yeah. O-line cannot protect him at all. And and the thing that really concerns me is Pittsburgh looked like absolute horseshit against the, the Ravens. And yeah. then they come out and just crush the Panthers. And I know the NFL is a week-to-week game. Um, but still, you you have to be concerned. The Steelers about that. ain't got no good defense either. I no. don't care what they did. Yeah, that defense is not that good. No, and they made I mean, the Panthers look abysmal. Yeah. So it is concerning. You know, what's so funny too is that the NFL commentators uh, that were on there, oh, we're, they're missing D'Angelo Williams. He's a big part of this offense. Yeah, shut, shut the, the hell, hell up, yeah. up. <laughs> D'Angelo Williams. Are you freaking kidding me, dude? That guy hasn't been. Brady. Yeah. He hasn't, yeah, exactly. He hasn't been relevant in years. Just because he adds new pink dreads to his hair doesn't make him a good player. Yeah. Okay, stop it. People living off that year with John Fox like six years ago, and him and Stewart yeah. tore it up still. It's it's not the same thing, guys. Nah. Uh, don't think even that for a second that D'Angelo Williams coming back is going to make Cam Newton significantly better. If anything, it's going to make him worse because he's probably not going to get as many goal line carries. Yeah. So, um, I mean, to me. I'm I'm worried about Cam Newton. I'm worried about Aaron Rodgers too. Um, I mean, and I'll touch on that. Felt better in Rodgers in his ADP. I've always said that. I've always felt like Aaron Rodgers was getting overdrafted. Yeah, I mean that offense. I still think is going to be good. But overrated. Yeah, it's, but it's yeah, good. It's, it's overrated. It's not elite. Everyone always thinks. Oh, man, it's not elite. the Broncos. Yeah, exactly. And everyone's always like, it's oh man, Green Bay offense. They have you know Jarrett Boykin and Jordy yeah. Nelson and the, where's Andrew Jared Boykin? Corliss. Where's Jared yeah. Boykin right now? What does he have? Two catches on the yeah, year? Just all. I mean, Randall come Cobb on. Even like they're they're not the Bronco offense. Aaron Rodgers is not Peyton Manning. He's not as good. Their O line is completely trash. Well, Denver has a very very good O line. Very very Manning. good point. Yeah, they don't have the O line. They don't have the skill positions. It's not that caliber of an offense, and it never was going to be. Right, I completely agree. So let's move on. Uh, let's talk about a question that we received on YouTube. Um, and this came from a person who's been following the podcast from the beginning. So I do appreciate that. Jason Kirk, he right. wants to know, uh, he, he has a question for us based on two of the rookie wide receivers that have looked really good so far. And he wants to yeah. know, through three weeks, do you think Kelvin Benjamin and Brandon Cooks can be relied on as week-to-week fantasy starters? I'm starting to get headaches from starting Keenan Allen over them. Oh, so Dustin... First of all, let's talk a little bit about Keenan Allen, Keenan but Allen. Yeah. but let's also talk a little bit about these rookie wide receivers, Calvin Benjamin and Brandon Cooks. Right. I mean, so what, uh, oh, what do you think about Keenan? What do you think about Keenan Allen so far? He's kind of got off to a slow start, despite the fact that the San Diego offense has been pretty good so far. Yeah, they've been really good minus Arizona. They've been damn good. Yep. It, you know, I I was so high on Keenan Allen, and I think he's I know so you were talented of a player. I love Keenan Allen as a player. He's one of yep. my favorite wide receivers. He's so talented at running routes. I mean, in some of the moves he put on Sherman, regardless if he caught the ball or not, he had Sherman on skates for the majority of that game. He's such a talented receiver that you just – he's still good. I mean, we saw him beating Sherman. It's just he, he's not getting the ball thrown his way. So 
there's, you know, it's either glass half empty or half full, however you look at that. He's making mm-hmm. the moves. It's not like he's just a bad player all of a sudden. He's getting open, but Philip Rivers is targeting Gates or Floyd or... Eddie Floyd, Royal. Eddie Royal, yeah. He seems like he's targeting <laughs> more. So I, I think Allen's opportunity will come, but in the meantime, mm-hmm. Brandon Cooks looks great. I mean, he's, he for does. PPR, he's looked amazing in that slot role they're playing him in. He looks everything to be worth the first-round pick and more. And me and you both love Calvin Benjamin. And oh, yeah. For how bad everyone else in that Carolina offense looks, it seems like he's a monster, man. I mean, he's the early rookie of the year candidate, I'd have to think, wouldn't you? I mean, for offensive. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, he is, first of all, he's like, Calvin Johnson size. Yeah, he's like 6'5", 220, 230, I think. And he's he's I mean, an he's, absolute beast. You know who he physically. reminds me of a who? lot is Plaxico Burris. Like a lot, like early Plaxico Burris when he first got yeah. to the Giants. You know, I could see that. Um, I could definitely see that. I don't know that he necessarily has like the um the same exact type of skill set as as that Blacks look, he, did, but he high points a ball so yeah well, that's what he goes me. same size he makes just he, okay here's the thing about Kelvin Benjamin that I've noticed he he almost has a little bit of Brandon Lloyd to him in a way where not saying that they're similar at all but Brandon Lloyd was known for making Nasty just absurd catches, catches and yeah. Kelvin Benjamin has done that and then he comes out and they run like a two-yard slant to him and he drops it and yeah, it's, like, it's either like dude. He the big one, but he can't catch the easy dink. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but I think that that will come with more time and more repetition. And, right. um, you know, I mean, hopefully yeah, it's, it's his third game and he's looking, making these catches like, yeah, he's going to get better. I love right. Calvin Benjamin. And, and the other thing too, is he so far this season, uh, he already has two touchdowns. Uh, yep. this past week he caught eight passes for 115 yards. So sick. Uh, and so that's, I mean, that's beautiful in that's an offense. So I mean, you have to keep in mind. That was a game where they were getting blown out, and he was still putting out big numbers. So we yeah. like to see that. Um, he also came really close to another touchdown. So I, I of course, love that as well. Yeah. But I think it's also worth noting that both of Kelvin Benjamin's touchdowns so far have come with Derek Anderson at quarterback. So the first one, obviously, week one when Derek Anderson was the starter. And right. then this past week, uh, they pulled Cam Newton they because he was Cam. just getting killed. Mm-hmm. And Derek Anderson came out and drove him down the field for a touchdown at the end of the game when it was a complete blowout. So... It's kind of I, I'm not saying that he's not getting targeted by Cam, but I do think it's a little bit interesting that both of his TDs have come from Derek Anderson. Not to say again he caught seven yeah, passes, I, I think from uh, from Cam Newton this past right. week. So I'm not really that worried about it. But uh-huh. I almost wonder if Derek Anderson right now is a be better, better quarterback. <laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe I don't not know. better, maybe not better skills wise, but maybe better for for Kelvin. For Kelvin. Yeah, Might exactly. I, I think that. Cam Newton is still looking his way. You can tell that Cam Newton is, is looking towards the direction. He trusts him. He's throwing target him in the ball. The TDs will come. He's big. He's a huge red zone target. The other receivers on that field are going to be like Jason Avant and Jericho Cotchery. He's mm-hmm. the guy they're going to look for. He makes absurd catches. I have no doubts about his TD upside still. I still think no matter who's the quarterback, he's going to get the TDs right. from Cam or whoever. I think he's going to. He, he's a very, very good receiver. I think so too, and I and to be honest with you, I think he's to me the the major question that you asked here is is he worth starting every oh, week? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think it is, uh, and I think that the other thing too is that I wouldn't be surprised at all. And we said this going into the year with Calvin Benjamin, uh, I double wouldn't be surprised TDs. if he finished yeah t- double digit TDs, yep. and that makes him at the very least that makes him a flex start every single week. Uh, I, I think I, he's a wide receiver too, though. I can already forward. see right now he's going to have one of those games where he's playing some team and he just goes the fuck off and he has three TDs or something. Yeah. Like, they're just all men. Kelvin Benjamin finished the game with three TDs and 80 yards or something. You know what I mean? But he just makes three sick TDs. Like, I think it's going to happen at some point this year because he and, has and, that kind of talent. And the thing is, too, about him is if he does have a game where he catches three passes for 28 yards, um, I think he's the kind of guy that he's going to show up on our buy low <laughs> because oh, yeah. I mean, uh, somebody's going to panic league. on it. Definitely. Yep. So, and we love this guy going forward. I mean, as far as dynasty, I think – Oh, I seriously think, yeah. yeah, I think he is literally one of the top guys that you can target for a dynasty lead. This guy yeah. is an absolute monster. Oh, uh, he so has sick. he has legit top 10 wide receiver written all over him, yeah. for sure. So, the only thing he's lacking is the major top in speed. But, I mean, even then, when you're that kind of size and you can high point a ball like that, like, you make up for it, the speed. Larry I mean, Fitzgerald. Yeah, ex- exactly. I look at Larry yeah. Fitzgerald like that. Plastical Not top end speed, but, yeah. Yeah, those kind of guys. I mean, Keenan Allen doesn't have top end speed at all, either. And he's a very good receiver, so... Right. He's way bigger physically than those guys, too. He's just nasty. He has everything now, going for him. Now, for Brandon Cooks, I'm still high on Brandon Cooks. Uh, he caught eight passes for 74 yards this past week. He led the team with 10 targets. He led him in receptions, led him in yards. Yep. But the thing is, to me, is I don't necessarily love uh, anybody in the New Orleans offense besides Drew Brees Jimmy and Jimmy Graham. Yeah. 
We've talked about this before. That offense just, it goes from week to week to week to week on who they're going to target and just build a game plan around. And it's almost yeah. impossible to predict. Right. I mean, even from a standpoint of, we were talking about how Kyrie Robinson is going to be the guy who gets all the goal line work and who gets yeah, a touchdown Thomas, this week. Yeah, Pierre Thomas. Pierre Thomas. Fucking goal line. Fuck it. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's so hard to predict that New Orleans offense. We know for the most part that it's going to be good. Uh, they play the Cowboys this week, so yeah, well, I think... Well, God, let's hope so, but I mean, I thought the first three weeks they'd tear it up, and here we are, so... Right, but this week, I think Brandon Cooks is in your lineup. I oh, think, yeah, definitely, because I don't know I think, gonna uh, cover him. Right, playing. the Cowboys have nobody to match up against him, and they just got done. Uh, they won the game, don't get yep. me wrong, my, my Cowboys nice came through in the end, but they allowed the Rams to throw for 327 yards. <laughs> so... Romo out duel to Austin Davis, what a champ. Yeah, what a guy. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's the thing, though, is even in a game that they won, they their defense is just such a train wreck. Drew Brees could easily be the number one quarterback this week. I think he probably – I think he'll probably Denver's be on the bye. either – Denver's on the bye. He has to be. Yeah, Denver's on the bye yeah, this week. So I think he'll manning. probably be either number one at, or number two at quarterback this week. Just so to luck's facing, I'd say, for me. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, that's uh, that looks good for Brandon Cooks. He has a real opportunity, I think, to be at least a flex starter going forward. Um, he's, he's got all the tools that you look for. He's going to get plenty of catches in this Super good fast. offense. So and they've, they've shown an ability to keep him on the field. While he's getting a lot of snaps. Like, yeah, he's definitely someone you could start going forward. You can start right. both those guys. And if you have Keenan Allen too, trade one. If you have some holes yeah. somewhere else, trade one of them. There you, you know? go. That's, that's a good point. I think that you could definitely do that right now. So, definitely. um, I, I like that idea as well. So let's move on now to a couple of guys who we are considering buying low on for okay. our fantasy team. So you and I, every week we go over this stuff and, and what we're really targeting here are players that are either coming off of rough starts to the season in this case, or, you know, maybe they're injured or, you know, something coming like that, that we're, something. yeah, we're yeah. looking for players whose value we think is going to skyrocket from here. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Now, obviously Eddie Lacy and Demarius Thomas were my guys for early in the season. And I still firmly believe that both of those guys are going to turn it around for their fantasy owners. I mean, they've been really disappointing so far for the most part. Demarius, Demarius had one that good foot game. Injury is the thing that's concerning about him a little bit. But... Yeah, but I still think he's going to turn it around. But my guy this week is actually Matt Forte. I now, like that one. Yeah. Matt Forte, obviously a top five pick in almost every single fantasy draft this year. But he only has 54 yards rushing in his past two games, and he hasn't scored a touchdown yet this season after yep. having the best touchdown season of his career last year. But he's been on the road against the 49ers and the Jets in his yeah. past two games, two really, nobody really good run defense. Jets. Yeah, nobody runs on the Jets. Right, exactly. So it, I think that those two games are kind of... I don't think that they're necessarily a trend. I think it's more of a mirage than it is a trend. Next right. week, he's going to be back home against the Packers, who've been pretty awful matchup. against yeah, the run. The Packers. Yeah. They have been absolutely terrible against opposing running backs, not just this year, but last year as well. I absolutely loved uh, Matt Forte coming into the season. He's going to get plenty of catches. He's still producing as a receiver, even when he's not running. So he's yeah. not putting up complete shitter games, PBR which is still nice. For you. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing. I think Matt Forte only goes up from here. Really like him going forward. Don't have any reason to be really worried about him. This is a good Chicago offense, and he's going to continue to touch the ball plenty. So, Dustin, who's your guy to buy low on this week? My buy low this week is Wes Welker because – I still think everyone's in the mindset that, oh, man, he's going to get hurt again, blah, blah, concussions, blah, blah, blah. He's coming off the suspension. And he very well might, but we just saw, again, he comes in, he steps right in, he has his role. He has insane chemistry with Peyton Manning, the best offense in football. And, it, I mean, the offense just looked different. I mean, they still were winning. They won the first two games, but the offense didn't look the way it looked last year without Wes Welker out there. It came in, you could see immediately on third downs, he's Peyton's go-to guy on third down. That kind of offense with those kind of snaps is going to generate touches. And there's so many guys that have drafted Welker, you know, and they immediately were, like, mad about the suspension. I still think that if you're in a PPR league, I absolutely love Wes Welker. If, if yeah. he's healthy, you play him and you don't worry about it at all. He's barely ever going to disappoint you. He doesn't have those games where he has a two. He just doesn't. He never has those games. Yep. And he never I, has the game that ruins you for your Yeah, life. you never lose because of Wes Welker any week. Right. So I, I, def, I love Wes Welker in any form. And, or in PPR, if I can get him in that for... You know, I'm trying to think of a trade that would make sense. If someone would offer you, you know, uh, what would be a good offer to get on Wes Welker? Just try to trade for someone like a running back or someone. What do you think the value would be on him? Man, um, I do mean. Do you feel to, comfortable giving up to get Wes? I mean, if if I'm giving up, like, I would give up a Darren like, Sproles. I was going to say, a to Darren get Sproles, Wes Welker. like a Joyke Bell or, or like something like that. You think you yeah. do that? 
I think a, a Reggie Bush, a Joyke Bell, like that level of a running back, a if PPR. I can get Wes Welker. Yeah, yeah because that's, that's where I think I'm at too, right around there. And and I think, like you said, the thing about Wes Welker is he he stepped into that offense and right away looked good. Yeah, he, and like he didn't Wes have Welker. a monster game. He yeah. had a solid Wes Welker-like game. Like, what, he had a 12 or 13 in PPR? I, so, yep. I think it was a 12, and I think he had 6 or 60, Seattle. something yeah, like that. that was against the pass passing defense. Like, he still steps in Bay 1, played only, like I think, 47% of the snap. I think it might even less than that. And he mm-hmm. still had a 12. He's, he's right. money in PPR. He's the best sure thing you can have in PPR. Let me give you. Let me just ask you a question because you're a big Denver Broncos fan, uh, somebody who really pays attention to them. And as an owner of Emmanuel Sanders in some leagues, are you right. worried at all about Emmanuel nope. Sanders' role changing in the offense? Are you worried about him snaking touches from Wes Welker or anything like that? No, because last year I think it was sustainable enough to sustain Welker, Demarius, and and uh, uh, Eric Decker. And Emmanuel Sanders has shown to just be unreal. He's leading the league in catches right now. So maybe maybe his catches take a tiny dip. But the yards, the TD, everything else, Emmanuel Sanders is going to be a top 10 wide receiver this year. I'm, I'm pretty damn confident in that, especially with Demarius Tam- Thomas having the slight hiccup in his injury. I love Emmanuel Sanders. He's become my new favorite player on the Broncos, straight up. <laughs> yep, and, I know. And I know. I, he's just been so phenomenal, man. He beat Sherman this Wednesday. He beat him multiple times. He beat Byron Maxwell. Peyton Manning clearly trusts him. He was throwing balls his way. He throws, his balls, throws balls his way all three games. Emmanuel Sanders is going to have a gigantic year, and Wes Welker is going to come in and have his role. Separate roles, I love both of them going forward. I don't think there's any concern whatsoever about that. Sounds good, man. So let me ask you then, we've talked about the guys that we're going to buy low on. Now we need to talk about the guys that we're going to sell high on this week. So each of us have one guy, and what we're talking about when we're talking about selling high is really the exact opposite of the buy low. So what we're looking to do is sell off guys who we think their value is only going to drop from here. So whether it be guys that were drafted high early in the year and mm-hmm. just they haven't panned out and, and people might still have a high opinion of them or maybe guys who uh, just for whatever reason we don't necessarily think that they're going to be able to continue the production that they've put up so far. Right. So, Dustin, who is your guy as a sell-high candidate this week? You know, man, I had a few off the top of my head. I was really debating this back and forth with a few guys, but the one that I think made the most sense to me was Jamal Charles. because it, like, And he was your number one overall player coming into the year, right? Or maybe number two? I, he was my number two, I believe, behind McCoy. Okay. I, I had McCoy number one in every form. Sure. He was number two in, in uh, PPR. Okay. And I, I, it, it's just the fact that week one was such a train wreck. He barely touched the ball. Andy Reid got ripped for it, rightfully so. How you do that is beyond me. Week two, he comes in, he gets his high ankle sprain, and then he's practicing on it, which confused the hell out of me because I'm thinking, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, it seems like you don't need to rush him back. Like, you have Niall Davis, why even letting him practice on it, you know? And then he's questionable all week. He ends up sitting out. Niall Davis has two really, really big games back-to-back. And I'm thinking now, how healthy is Jamal Charles really going to be? Because they clearly are still playing him on this in- injury, no matter how small or big it is. Mm-hmm. And also, Niall Davis is tore up. Like, I-, I can't imagine them going back where it's like, oh, Jamal gets all the carries, and Niall, you're getting three or four a game at most. So I really think that his value going forward is probably not going to nearly meet his ADP. So sure. if someone offers you something comparable, like a you know a good running back that went in the second or third, I mean, if you could would offer, would you give him up? Levy, would you do Le'Veon Bell right now for Jamal Charles if you want JC? Are you giving him oh, up for yeah, Le'Veon without, Bell? Whoa, yeah, without question, I'd, I'd click Marco that. Murray, th- that type of guy. Yeah, absolutely. If I get those kind okay. of offers for a second or third round running back, you know, Sands maybe a few. Like maybe I wouldn't do it for Alfred Morris or, or Arian Foster, maybe. But for the uh, Le'Veon Bell, absolutely. I think Le'Veon Bell's looked unreal. I completely agree, and I think Jamal Charles is, like you said, um, I think best case scenario is that he comes back and gets 80-20, yeah, which, don't get me wrong, is still too. good, but the problem is that Kansas City's offense overproduced last year for their talent level, okay? Oh, so Jamal yeah. Charles is not going to get the numbers that he did last year. That's just not going to happen. Right off the top, that's not going to happen, yeah. and we TDs saw that especially. early. Yeah, TD so, especially for him. Yeah, he's he's not going to get 19 touchdowns. Yeah, that again. was just such an anomaly. Happen. Yeah, that was such so, a, such an anomaly. And that was basically when he was getting 100 percent of the touches. Yeah. So now we we chop that down to 80. If if we're saying that uh, Niall Davis is going to get some work, and I think that just based on the fact that he's been so productive with the opportunity that he has, it kind of forces Casey's hand right now in giving him some touches. So I I think Jamal Charles' best case scenario, like you said, is being a borderline top ten running back right now, and I don't like that. I don't like guys who are nursing injuries. I hate that for fantasy football because you always are having to worry about it. You're and Kansas City is in a lot of late games, which is something that. I think it's a little bit undervalued. Yeah. 
because what ends up happening is that you come into a game on Sunday afternoon in the in the late games and you already had to decide if you want to start your guy before him yeah, that started exactly. before him and it's a it's a really tough situation tough to be to in yeah. so I I don't like that um I think I agree with Jamal Charles as being a sell high now my sell high for the week is actually Aaron Rodgers and like it's that. It's been kind of an interesting start to the season because it's not necessarily that he is injured or that he has significant injuries in the offense or anything like that. It's just been that they've underproduced. And we talked a little bit about this, that the Packers offense, I think a lot of people came into the season assuming that they were going to be the next Denver Broncos offense, the next yep. team to lead the league in scoring. And that is just not happening. Yep. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this offensive line has been absolutely atrocious. They've, they've been a year and they never fix it. It's, right. It's and, so stupid. But it's it's bad to a level that they're not able to run the ball or pass the ball this yep. year. Aaron Rodgers has two games now with fewer than 200 yards. Terrible. That's that's a guy that Terrible. you drafted probably with your second round pick in fantasy. At the latest, yeah. Do At not love that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Terrible. And the thing is, the running game's not working, which means that defenses are able to key in on the pass. They're yeah. able to stop the deep ball. I mean, Jordy Nelson had the one game, and obviously we... You know he's going to have those games where atrocious jet secondary. Right, exactly. Time zone. And and I don't think that that happens again this year. He's going to have those games where he has big games and he has the big monster plays, and that's going to save them. But the fact that they're not able to just walk down the field like they have been in years past is a little bit concerning at this point. So uh, I think another thing too, and the defense is ass too. Right, right, and that's that's meant that they haven't been on the field nearly as often. So. Now, the thing is, too, is that you look at this, and I know Andrew Corliss scored a touchdown. Whatever, dude. Shut yeah. up about Andrew Corliss. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to entertain that, okay? There's no real targets in this offense outside of Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb for yeah. passing. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. the end of Jared it. Jared Boykin already got demoted for Devontae Adams. Eddie Lacy's a like a train wreck. Yeah, and, yeah. and Eddie Lacy's not going to be a big pass catcher. He's yeah. not going to be terrible. Oh, but yeah, but he's yeah, not going to get no 60 30, balls a year ever. 30 anything. reception guy. Yeah. It's, it's not... It's negligible what yeah. he's going to do in the passing game. Absolutely. So, don't love that at all. Um, it makes it very easy for defenses when the opposing when your when your team is not able to run the ball. The opposing defense can really just focus in on those two receivers, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, mm-hmm. and Aaron Rodgers is going to try and throw the ball at tons to Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson, I think yeah, his value his still remains about the same. Yeah. But Aaron Rodgers, I'm dropping a little bit. I think that. He's um, definitely pull Andrew Luck for me going forward. Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't think that he's not a top 10 quarterback or anything. I'm not calling him like the Tom Brady level or anything. But um, I think right now you really have to consider the fact that a lot of people still look at Aaron Rodgers as being Aaron Rodgers, the guy who was the number one fantasy quarterback a couple of years ago. Yeah, that he's and, comparable to Manning and such. And it's right. Like, no, it's not the case at all. And, and that's the type of person that you need to look at. You need to look yep. at these people that have – Cam Newton as their starter right now that have Tom Brady that maybe have a Tony Romo or, uh, you know, maybe one of those guys that has struggled so far in this season. Yeah, Kaepernick's another good example. All these guys have struggled early in the season, and they're desperate for a quarterback right now, Mm -hmm. okay? These are the kind of guys that we want to target if we've got an Aaron Rodgers and say say we were lucky enough to have an Aaron Rodgers and we were also able to spend a waiver wire and get a guy like Kirk Cousins or get a guy like – you know, or or let's just say that you were lucky enough that you also drafted Jay Cutler because Jay Cutler was not being drafted as a, a starting fantasy quarterback. Yep. You unload Aaron Rodgers right now. Yep. You have to because I know he's going to come out there and he's going to have that monster game and you're going to be like, oh, man, I sure wish I would have kept Aaron Rodgers and uh, Clickwood and KSL are so stupid for telling me <laughs> to trade Aaron Rodgers. But I'm telling you guys, he is not going to produce at the level that you want him to for the remainder of the year. He's not going to put up Peyton Manning numbers, but you can get a king's ransom in return right now. I still think that you can get a guy who is an RB1 right now. I still think that you could maybe potentially trade Aaron Rodgers for a DeMarco Murray or, you know, that type of level of player. For the right guy, yeah, that has more, like, has some good running backs, yeah. Right, or or a wide receiver, you know, or something like that, something that can immediately help your team. And Uh even if you don't have a guy like a Kirk Cousins, go out and pick up an Andy Dalton. Go pick up an Eli Manning, even. And I'm not saying that these guys are comparable to Aaron Rodgers, but the the point differential between those two, I don't think is going to be as big as you're going to get I got, for what you get in return for Aaron Rodgers. I got a good one for you. Okay. Yeah. Say you have Jay Cutler. Yeah. And somebody offers you Emmanuel Sanders for Aaron Rodgers. You taking it? PPR. That's that's a close one, man. I as as somebody who's kind of. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I personally think that I probably would because yeah, I, I think that I we too. could go find 
Um, I don't think we, we're going to find a whole lot of receivers that are going to be better Emmanuel than Emmanuel Sanders. Sanders. Yeah, you ain't getting Emmanuel Sanders off the waiver wires or anything that are going right. to be close to him in value. Right. So I might, I might be like, oh man, like I, I might, if I, if I'm in that situation, I might be like, oh man, like I think that's such a good offer, but you think he could maybe Throw give me just a little else. bit yeah. more, <laughs> like, you know, something like, give me like a, uh, you know, like a, uh, I don't want to say like a Donald Brown, cause that would probably be too much, but you know, like a player that could potentially Donald break out undervalued. I mean, if yeah. San Diego looks good. That's, I think that Donald Brown's a really good example for something you get someone to kick in. Yeah, so he's something still going to be undervalued. Something like that, though, somebody that could end up being the guy that gets a lot of touches in their offense. Um, if I can get them along with Emmanuel Sanders for Aaron Rodgers, oh yeah, I'm pulling that trigger so fast, man. Yeah. That's that's a great offer for you if you can get that for a Rodge. I just don't think that the the difference that you make uh, from an Andy Dalton to an Aaron Rodgers at this point is as significant as you could uh, with the the Emmanuel Sanders I mean, what versus Dalton whatever receiver like you top have. Five in quarterback last year. Yeah, I mean, Andy Dalton five. was productive as hell, and, and we both going, think he was going below all those guys too. It's so oh, yeah. weird. Undrafted, yeah. undrafted, so mostly. Ridiculous. He's still owned in less than fifty percent of ESPN. Number five leagues. overall quarterback last year, and people are taking Aaron Rodgers in the second round. It's so mind blowing. Yeah. It's, it's so that's the thing about fantasy football every year is people think that you and and it is true Aaron Rodgers is going to be more consistent than Andy Dalton. Yeah, he's going to outscore Andy Dalton, I think. But, yeah, but but what I'm saying is for the for the course of the year, if you get a 30 point difference between Aaron Rodgers and Andy Dalton, that's less than two points a week. Yeah, I'm making that up with Emmanuel Sanders over whatever receiver I have. Yeah, if you're if you're one of those so, people that's starting that's like, oh man, I was just really really. Um, I'm trying to think of a good, uh, Larry Fitzgerald. I was really all in on Larry Fitzgerald, and he's just looked like complete dumpster fire so far. Emmanuel Sanders is going to outscore by Larry Fitzgerald more than, or he's going to outscore Larry Fitzgerald more than uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to outscore Andy Dalton this year. Yeah, very so, probable. Yeah. Very, very probable with that. So that's it for our uh, buy low, sell highs for the week. And the last thing that I want to talk about is our waiver wire rankings. So we saw, obviously, a ton of situations that were interesting this week. A ton, yeah. And uh, what what I've basically come up with as what I want to use as kind of like a, uh, a baseline for players that we can put on the waiver wire rankings is I want them to be owned in fewer than 70% of ESPN leagues. So this is uh, your standard ESPN league, and it, it'll show the, the percentage owned of the player. And obviously, it's going to change from today change till tomorrow. Yeah. But um, but for the most part, as of the recording that we're doing here, all of these players are owned in fewer than 70% of ESPN leagues. And they're all players that I think very well could be players that you want to pick up based they should on They be your, rostered, probably. Yeah. I think for the most part, yeah, I think all these guys should be rostered. So here are my top 10, and I'm going to have Dustin run through his top 10. But uh, let's start it off. We've got at number one, I've got Kirk Cousins. Number two, I've got Ahmad Bradshaw. Number three, Matt Asiata. Number four, Bobby Rainey. Number five, Jordan Matthews from Philadelphia. Number six, a guy that broke out that I had really not known anything about, and I think Dustin's going to talk a little bit about this guy, Lorenzo Telefero. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name even correctly. You got it. But yeah, it's Telefero. Yeah, he, he looked really good in the little amount that I saw of him. Mm-hmm. Alfred Blue then at number seven for the Houston Texans. Number eight, we've got Brian Quick of the St. Louis Rams. Number nine, Ellen Robinson of Jacksonville. And number 10, Larry Donnell or Donnell. I don't know how that's pronounced Donald. even um, mm-hmm. for the New York Giants. So, Dustin, let's give me your top 10 real quick and then tell me a little bit about Lorenzo Telefero. All right, I mean, we're, we're pretty similar. I, number one, I have Kirk Cousins. I mean, I think, I mean, I've been a huge fan of Kirk Cousins. I mean, I've been telling you about him for a little while. I think he's definitely the best quarterback in Washington. And I think he seriously has – is. I think it's a very good shot he finishes top 10 quarterback easily. And uh, beyond that, I have Matt Asiata at number two. Number three, I have Ahmad Bradshaw, only because of Bradshaw's injury concerns because I think he's probably still going to get hurt at some point. Sure. Number four, Bobby Rainey. Number five, Alfred Blue, who I think is a very premium handcuff to Arian Foster, who is always hurt. Number five, I have – uh, or I was, that was not number five, Albert Blue, excuse me. Number six, I have Jordan Matthews, Philadelphia, out of Vanderbilt. I really liked him. Number seven, Lorenzo Talaferro. Number eight, Larry Donnell. Number nine, uh, Brian Quick. And number 10, Alan Robinson out of Penn State at Jacksonville. And Love it. to touch on Lorenzo Talaferro a little bit, why, the Ravens took him in the fourth round, I believe, of this draft out of Coastal Carolina. He's a big dude. He fits Kubiak's zone blocking really well. And you assume that's why they draft him. It was, it was their first. It was their first draft with Gary Kubiak already established an offensive coordinator. So you assume there was some type of influence in there. He's a really big guy, but he actually has surprising light feet, a little bit like Arian Foster, I think. And it, you know he's got the size. He's like two thirty. He's built right. He's not. The, he's not slow at all either. He's really a big time uh, potential running back for them. 
And Bernard Pierce has looked mediocre. Justin Forsett is Justin Forsett. But I still think unless Justin – or excuse me, Bernard Pierce goes down, I still think his role is limited. But if Bernard Pierce does go down, I really think he'll probably be the guy there till the end of the year in Baltimore. So I really do like Lorenzo Talaferro. Yeah, he's looked really good in the little amount that I've seen from him. I mean, uh, I think – that's a, a really interesting situation because Bernard Pierce hasn't been the model of health over no. his career. So, um, yeah, I do think that he has some value. Now, with Alfred Blue, I, let me ask you about Arian Foster because he has just been fostering injuries yeah. for quite some time. <laughs> but <I'm>... Yeah, <laughs> that was terrible, I know. <laughs> no, but here, but here's the thing, though. So with a guy like Alfred Blue, do you think that he has the realistic potential given the mediocre – state of the Houston Texans offense to actually produce as a, a viable every single week starter in fantasy. Yeah, I mean, you're assuming if Arian Foster goes down. Right? Yeah. If Arian Foster, let's say this, this injury that he has right now flares up again and he misses okay. another game or two. I mean, are we starting Alfred blue in fantasy yeah, leagues right I, now? You know, I mean, it's all, everything is so situation dependent, but I mean, if you're needing a running back and it's, you know, when he is on your bench, I, I could start him. I could easily could, because I think that Houston is still good enough. They still have a pretty good O-line. They still have Dwayne Brown, an elite left tackle. They still have Andre Johnson. So they still have uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who's looked good. Ryan Fitzpatrick's Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's ass, but we know that. But I don't think they're going to get to a point where they can really stack the box versus the running game and make and uh, to ever do that like consistently enough because of the outside weapons. So I, I think you could start Alfred Blue. In, in some formats, and I also think that there's a good chance Arian Foster does go down again for multiple games, so he probably should be owned in the majority of leagues, especially if you own Arian Foster. Definitely handcuff him with yeah. Alfred Blue if he's out there. I think I agree with that as well. Um, you know, I I have him at ranked that number seven on my list, but, I mean, yeah, for I me, five, him and— pretty close. Yeah, hit, for me, I think a lot of these guys are right in next to one another as far as your rankings go, and it kind of depends on your situation. If you need a guy that's going to be a long-term solution at running back, right. I think you got to go with a guy like a Matt Asiata yeah. or, you know, something like that. But if you need somebody that's just like a one- or two-week guy that maybe has a little bit of a higher potential, possibly Alfred Blue might be the guy that you, that you want. Yeah, long-term um, potential is Talaferro, especially. Yeah. yeah, very true, and I think that's something that I wanted to touch on too um if you're in a situation where you're looking for a long-term dynasty running back he might Telfer be the guy be there the guy. Yeah. he really might be the guy there going forward i mean it's not like bernard pierce has been like some rock star no and they've so, sure clearly shown they don't have that much faith in bernard pierce anyways going back to the i mean they drafted yeah they drafted talifero with a fairly high pick i mean fourth round knowing that at that point Ray Rice was still on the team and Bernard Pierce. So right. they clearly saw something in Talaferro to use a pick on him. I mean, a fourth round right. pick for running back is not exactly like a throwaway pick. Right. Agreed. And and especially considering running backs aren't going in the first round anymore. Exactly. So yeah. it's, I mean, it's actually probably a more premium and he, pick and than he's people built would think. To, I mean, he's built to sustain a big workload and Joe Flacco is still Joe Flacco. He's ass. I, I still think that the Ravens, there's, I mean, Gary Kubiak in the zone blocking always sustains a big time number, a big time running back. There's mm-hmm. always a guy that's going to have a good season under Gary Kubiak. And if Fair. Rod Pierce like this, I see no reason why it can't be Talaferro because they clearly like him. Right, right. So that's kind of it for our waiver wire rankings. But one more thing that I wanted to point out here, and uh, he's number two on my list because, you know, I just. I think Kirk Cousins, I think the world of Kirk Cousins after what I saw of him this past week. Yeah, but you know me, I've been the, the number one Kirk Cousins fanboy. Yeah, exactly. But Ahmad Bradshaw not being owned in, in every league right now is Criminal. completely ridiculous. <laughs> Criminal. I mean, he should have been owned in every league in the draft. Yeah, exactly. But now we're three weeks into the season, and we've seen that he's outproducing Trent Richardson. Now, I understand that Trent Richardson's touched the ball more, but he's not getting the money carries. Ahmad Bradshaw is the goal line guy yeah. and he scored a few touchdowns now in that offense. So, I and mean, he's getting passes too, right? He's getting the, the carries that you want. Trent Richardson's yeah. getting those ass carries that where he's running up the middle in, uh, at his own 20 and it's Being like grind away games and stuff. Yeah. Right. And we just, I, I, to me, I think it's very obvious that Ahmad Bradshaw is going to be the guy going forward there. I, it sucks because I, for whatever reason, I gave myself some hope that Trent Richardson might still be <laughs> moderately viable. I didn't nope. end up getting him in any league. Nope. But, um, yeah, he's looked freaking terrible, dude. He looks like I, Trent Richardson. He, you know what's sick is that his yards per carry is actually up from last year. Yeah, God. As so pathetic it, like, as that like is. 1.5 instead of 1.4 or something. Yeah, exactly. It's just – it's <laughs> atrocious either way. But, uh, you know, Trent Richardson, I think, at this point is somebody that you pretty much aren't considering starting. I mean, no, I mean it's I, almost I at the point where you – 
you can almost drop him. Uh, the only reason I say you don't drop him is because Amop Bradshaw the, gets hurt. Right, the second Amop Bradshaw gets hurt, then he Number might one touch the ball first. 20, 25 times yeah. a game. So I Feel mean like that that yards. makes him. Yeah, even if he gets two <laughs> yards per carry, if he gets a touchdown, you're at you know at at a, a ten point game. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's not that terrible, but. Uh, yeah, for the most part, Trent Richardson, not really valuable. I think we, like right now, for example, if you could go out and pick up Alfred Blue and you have to drop Trent Richardson, are you doing it? Do you, do you also own Arian Foster? Because if I don't own Arian Foster, I probably wouldn't. But if yeah. I own Foster, I probably would. Yeah. I think it's I think it's right on that level, though. I mean, a guy like Lorenzo Talaferro, those type of guys, I think you could realistically consider dropping Trent Richardson for just because of the, the high-end potential of those yeah, guys there, is there higher is no than, than Richardson. Trent. Yeah, Trent's potential is like, well, they grinded away a game. He got like 20 carries for like 60 yards and a TD. That's his, that's his potential at this point. Right. That's and Lorenzo Talaferro already did better than that. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Talaferro was a better back straight up, so yeah. It, I, I would I prefer him going forward. I mean, if Pierce goes down, I'm, I'm going to really like Lorenzo Talaferro, I think. Yeah, agreed. So that is pretty much going to do it for today's episode. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Dustin, thank you for joining me as always on this episode. Mm-hmm. We hope that you guys enjoyed it, and we really hope that you guys learned something. If you did, please be sure to press that like button below and also press the subscribe button so that you can be updated when we put out our next episode. If you have any questions about your lineup for week four, if you're thinking about making any trades, or if you're just looking at a general fantasy football question, make sure that you leave that, that in the comment section below. Or please send us a tweet to either at Clickwood TV or at Project KSL. We'll do our best. Yeah, and also follow Dustin. (laughs) He he wants to get followers. So uh, please go ahead and do that. We will also be doing our, of course, doing our best to try and answer as many questions as we can in the YouTube comments if we're not going to touch on them on the show for whatever reason. If you see us favor a tweet, it's a good possibility that we're going to be answering that question on the show. So definitely hit us up with those. We do like to answer the questions, and it just gives us better interactivity uh, with the fans. So thank you guys again, like I said, for for all the support and everything like that. Yep. We'll talk to you guys next time on the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Bye. 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 Bye.